Hi folks, Sandro here with World Cartoon News and Shenanigans, and today I want to talk about the legendary news that Lightyear has been a box office flop, folks. You love to see it, you just love to see it. You go woke, you go broke. What can I say? Uh, and I do love this article for, I, out of all the websites, right? There's like, it's being, this is like big news that, uh, Lightyear flopped Pixar is usually the crown jewel. Like it's, it's been known as the crown jewel of the animation industry. And for this to flop, uh, it, it really sends a message. It really does. And, uh, out of all the websites, I looked uh, quite a bit of them and Breitbart just has the most legend. <laughs> like it, it is the greatest one i had to pick this one let's see the headline they went with disney's big gay light year is the latest woke box office flop just i i love that and we also have this headline down here light year the latest piece of child grooming media from the predators at the walt disney company is looking like a box office catastrophe which is only a surprise to those who don't live in the real world so um you know, what can I say? What can I say? They're, they're right on the money. That's what I'll say. Breitbart is literally right on the money. So congratulations to Breitbart. And, um, I wanted to give my take. Now I, I will start this video off here by saying that I have not yet seen the movie. Okay. I will tell you guys that here on this channel, it is a tradition where whenever a new Pixar film comes out, I do a review of it. Okay, I do a review of it, and then I put it on my tier list. This is my most recent tier list uh, from when Turning Red came out, right? So I actually put uh, Turning Red as one of the uh, bottom five Pixar movies of all time. And uh, my least favorite film from Pixar was Cars 3. And you guys should go watch the last video to get a, a reasoning on why I put that one as the worst. And, um, you know, speaking of Lightyear and Toy Story... I actually think the original OG Toy Story was the greatest Pixar film of all time. And uh, yeah, take a nice look at this tier list if you guys like it. Like I said, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned in the coming months when I um, do my light year review. So uh, that's going to be pretty fun. But uh, let's get back to talking about why this movie flopped in my opinion. Okay, I've got a couple reasons here. I I've seen a bunch of YouTube videos and... They each have their own reasonings. I wanted to give my personal reasons. The first one I think that makes the most sense is obviously they went woke. One of the biggest things that they, um, one of the big pulls of this movie. So they released it in June. They went for a whole pride month angle, right? They went for the pride month, uh, pride month angle. And the big gimmick of this movie was that there's a lesbian relationship and they have a, a baby even. They, they have a, I guess they adopted maybe or something went on here. Uh, <laughs> or maybe she, like maybe this one, the black one is bisexual and she she had a child from a previous, I, I don't give a shit. I, I don't care. Why are we talking about this in a movie about a spaceman fighting, fighting an outer space battle? Like what the fuck is going on here? This has nothing to do with like Buzz Lightyear. Like, what is this doing here in a, in a light year film? What does this have to do with Toy Story? What? Nothing. It's just here to push an agenda and, like they said, groom some children by uh, pulling this shit in their movies. And uh, it, it's not just them. It, it really isn't just Disney. It's like all of these corporations, all of them, all the big media ones, uh, not the indies so much, but the big media ones, we're seeing a push right now. The latest trend for attacking children is uh, the whole drag show. They're doing these child drag shows. They're making shows on it. They're literally making shows. I think on HBO Max, there's some show where it's like focusing on drag shows for children. It's so sick. It's so disgusting. It's repulsive. It's Good God. I wouldn't be surprised if Disney announced like a couple of years from now that they're doing a movie, a Pixar movie called like, uh, I don't know, preteen drag show or so, you know, like I could see the next big Pixar film being some garbage like that. Uh, con considering how we're escalating here, but maybe this will be a wake up call. Who knows? Maybe it'll be a wake up call. And they, they realize like, Hey, People are pushing back. People don't want to see this. People are not giving their dollars for this woke garbage. 
And um, maybe maybe we'll uh, we'll start to see Disney go back to how they were in the old days, where they just completely got rid of this sort of thing. And uh, they there was apparently an internal backlash where they actually removed the scenes. Right, they removed some of the uh, the the les the lesbian scene here. Or this is the main scene, right? The lesbian scene. They removed this scene, and then they they actually restored. There was a backlash internally from Pixar employees that were probably activists. Uh, or, well, they were most assuredly activists, let's say. And uh, they actually ended up restoring the scene back into the movie uh, at the cost of like you know certain parts of the world who were not putting up with this garbage. And uh, that's the first mo- reason that I think this failed, right? So obviously they went woke, they went broke. You focus more on this shit instead of selling your movie. Imagine if Disney came out and said, Lightyear is going to be the biggest space movie of the decade, right? They did not market it in this fashion. They instead, they saw it was June. They went for the cheap garbage, uh, you know, they targeted people who celebrate pride. They targeted the gay community and they thought that that was going to be a huge selling point. And look at this. It ended up being a flop. So that's my first reason they went woke. They went broke and they decided to focus more on a relationship that had no business being here in a kid's movie instead of marketing their film to the wider public and getting garnering interest because I was not, I wasn't like, I I was going to watch this movie, but like, I wasn't hyped for it. Like this is going to be my second reason on why this movie failed. And it's because I I really just feel like toy story finished like three times now. Like, you know, how much more toy story do we need? Really? You know, toy story three, perfect ending. And then they carry it on and they're like, no, we need toy story four. And it's like toy story four unnecessary, unnecessary film, but sure. You want to end the film again on your own terms with Woody finding Bo Peep. Sure. Why not? And it's like now, now this film chronologically takes place, uh, before, before toy story one. So this is sort of the film that made Andy want to get Buzz Lightyear for his birthday in the first toy story. Right. But like, it's just God damn, like we didn't need that. Like Toy Story had its ending in Toy Story 3. 4 was overkill. And now making a spin-off just feels like super overkill and was very unnecessary. And um, I even made a joke during my live stream that like, what's the next Toy Story film? They're going to go find Wheezy, you know, the penguin from Toy Story 2. He kind of got lost. Um, th- you know, they, they mentioned that like they lost him somewhere along the way. Uh, at, maybe at a garage sale or something, but like, what? When's the film? When are we going back for the old wheeze? You know, <laughs> like, when can we get the wheezy rescue mission? Um, I, I'm just playing around. Toy Story, in my eyes, it ended at three. I think three had a, just a beautiful ending there, and uh, I think that this is going to be my second reason. It's just Toy Story overkill. Toy Story overload. We didn't need this. Toy Story concluded. Third reason, I I think I'll give five reason. Okay, so my third reason on why this film flopped is because of the name. I know, I know, shocking, right? Shocking. But I do think the name has a lot to do with why this uh, film flopped. We've actually seen recent days, uh, we've never seen it before, but Warner Brothers. Now, this is really interesting. They actually changed the, there was a film, they released a film with Harley Quinn. And it was called some shit like Har- the emancipation of Harley Quinn, the birds of play or some shit like that. Right. And then they act- people were saying like, what a stupid title. Like we, we can't even say that in a mouthful. And then Warner brothers came back in and they're like, okay, we're actually, even though the movie's released and it's been out for a couple days or weeks or whatever, they're like, we're actually going to change the name of the film to the Harley Quinn and the birds of prey, you know? So like, I feel like it's about brand awareness and quality titling, you know? And I feel like with this movie, Lightyear was not a good title. I think they should have had the words Toy Story somewhere in there to let people know that this film was connected to the Toy Story franchise, which is a name that people recognize. People recognize Toy Story? Not everybody's going to realize that Buzz Lightyear and Lightyear are the connection there. You know what I mean? 
But you throw the word Toy Story in there, I, I think more people start to uh, put two and two together. Um, so that's my third reason. Uh, fourth reason is, uh, <laughs> well, this is actually shocking, but maybe they just had a bad time. I, I don't know, maybe, maybe, right? Like we've seen Jurassic World just completely come out of nowhere and, uh, you know, gobble up a lot of their box office. Yeah, you see here, uh, it comes in second place behind the second weekend of Jurassic World Dominion. Jurassic, uh, and this film, Jurassic World Dominion, it is now like this. I think this article was a couple days old. It has now surpassed Lightyear. So maybe, maybe, just maybe, you know, Lightyear was in a time slot that was highly competitive and it could not survive against some of the, the Titans, uh, especially if it had a gimmicky story that was a spin off that we didn't need and focused on a lesbian relationship that shouldn't have been there in the first place. So those, those are at least four different uh, reasons. And uh, my fifth reason, okay, my, fi <laughs> my fifth reason is all about Tim Allen, right? The voice of Buzz Lightyear. I think a lot of people were, whenever you see Buzz Lightyear, you probably think of the voice actor behind him, Tim Allen, this guy, you know Tim Allen, come on. Tim Allen, Buzz Lightyear, there you go. Uh, Toy Story's beloved Space Ranger action figure was voiced by Tim Allen in the first four installments, but not, you know, people are asking the question, why Tim Allen doesn't voice Buzz in Lightyear? And um, this is, it, it's really interesting because if this is a canon experience here, right? If this is a canon experience, the toy, like the Buzz Lightyear toy doesn't actually have Buzz Lightyear's voice, right? Like, wouldn't you expect, or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just wrong. I don't know. But like, when I was a kid, I had a Woody doll, right? You would like pull the cord and you'd be like, there's a snake in my boot. And it sounded like Tom Hanks, right? It sounded like Tom Hanks, his voice. I could swear it was an original voice clip from Tom Hanks. But like, in this movie, the, like I said, the gimmick is that Andy saw this movie then he gets a, the Buzz Lightyear because he liked Buzz Lightyear so much, right? And I'm just like, wouldn't the actor, shouldn't, like, I think this was a huge mistake. I think Tim, they should have marketed Tim Allen heavenly, and they should have had Tim as the main lead uh, as Buzz Lightyear. They should have had him in there. They should have done his voice, and it would have made sense in the, the universe that, like, Buzz Lightyear has the voice clips from Buzz in Lightyear, in, in this film, Lightyear, he actually uses the clips, you know, when, when we hear Buzz in the original Toy Story, he has his catchphrases when he pops his buttons there, he pushes the little buttons, and he has his catchphrases, we could have got those, we could, it would have been cool to hear, like, the original Toy Story voice, um, the voice clips used in Lightyear, but now we don't really get that, right, we don't really get that. Um, we just get a different voice actor doing his best, you know, Buzz Lightyear interpretation. Uh, so I think these are the big five, the big five of why this flopped. But overall, you know, it, it, it flopped. It, and I really hope this is a lesson to Disney. I really do. I hope it's a lesson to Disney. I hope it's a lesson to Netflix. Hope it's a lesson to HBO Max and everybody in between that, if you keep pushing this garbage towards children, especially like if you want to do a, a lesbian relationship in like a mature or a rated R film. Okay. Okay. Why not? Right. Why not? It, it's the sky is the limit there. But like when you're aiming this shit at children, it really is grooming. It really is propaganda. It really is sick uh, on every level. And I think people have grown tired of it. I think we're seeing one of the biggest, like, conservative pushes in the pendulum is swinging huge right especially here in canada we've had the liberals in power uh the left-wing side of politics in power for quite some time and there i think we're gonna see a huge pendulum swing in 2000 uh what is it 24 when the next election election comes i think we're gonna see one of the biggest conservative landslides in history Similarly, in America, you know, there's going to be a, a red wave, right? A red wave of the uh, Republicans. And uh, I, I really hope we can push back as a whole, as a North America, against this, this woke garbage. And um, 
going forward. I hope not only does this affect the films, I hope this affects the shows because we've been seeing it seep in. Like even Amphibia, a show that wasn't overtly woke, still had episodes. They still had a lesbian couple and they still had the pride flag in there in an episode or two. It, it's just, it's seeping in and we're all getting sick of it. We really are. We don't want this politics, uh, this, uh, the sexuality being pushed in these films that are aimed at children. We just don't want this. We don't want it. Like I said, if you want to make a rated R film, go bananas. But, uh, if you're aiming for the, uh, what is it, the G rated family films? No, no more, no more. They got to stop doing it. And, uh, I hope there's repercussions, uh, beyond this flop. Especially this is, like I said, Pixar film. This is a highly prestigious animated, uh, you know, the pinnacle of animation right now. And modern day Pixar, it's a joke. Even Family Guy made a joke. I covered this a while back. Family Guy did a bit where they they mock Pixar. Even though, like, Pixar is part of the whole Disney brand here. They basically talk about how Pixar just kind of makes meddling movies mostly now, you know? Um, you can even see in my tier list, most of the newer shit, I actually put most of the newer shit in the bottom and that's not like, I'm not doing that intentionally. I just think they're bad or they're boring or they're just not as exciting as some of the ones up here. Uh, Coco and inside out are more of the recent ones. Uh, I think those are definitely exceptions for sure. But, uh, most of the other new ones are just, just not as good, not as good at all. And, um, I think I, I touched on everything I wanted to touch on here. Uh, I am not sad that this movie flopped. I hope that if Disney pulls this shit again, and by the way, this is the second time this happened. Uh, on Pixar had this movie called Onward, where they had a Cyclops like pink troll lady in there, and uh, they made it a big deal. It's like, oh my god, she's a lesbian, you know? She's a lesbian. She mentions in the film that she has a girlfriend and whatever, whatever. That movie also flopped. Although it, it did get, it was pulled out of theaters around the time when COVID, like the theaters started closing. So we'll never really know how much of that uh, box office flop was, you know, mitigated by COVID or like, you know, we, we don't have the circumstances. They could blame the flop on COVID on that one. But I think that that movie would have flopped if uh, COVID didn't happen. That's my opinion. So we've seen this time and time again. And I hope it keeps happening to them. You keep doing this shit, fuck off. Nobody's going to watch your shit. Uh, so that's going to be it for me. Please like, please let me know all your comments down below. Subscribe, share, and uh, why not watch an ad for your boy Sandro. Thank you guys so much. Peace out. Bye-bye.